Hi, I'm Ted Bear. My son Tucker and I wrote a book called That's Cool, which is available on Amazon. It taught you 49 cool tricks and skills to raise your cool factor. Well, in one of the chapters, we taught you how to tie a monkey's fist. Let me show you this up close here. It's just a very cool knot. Unfortunately, it has minimal practical uses. Traditionally, it was used as either a connector but mainly for a weight on the end of a line that they'd throw between boats. Now, it's generally you see it just used for ornamental purposes, like, like this keychain here. Today I'm gonna to teach you another cool knot called the bolin. The bolin is fast and easy to tie, plus when it's under tension, the knot doesn't slip. Ask anyone what they don't like about knots in general, and they'll tell you that their knots are hard to untie. Well, this knot is not that knot. You'll impress your family and friends with this knot. Plus, it's very useful and very cool. You can use the knot for tying something on the top of your car. Here I'm using three bolins to lower something heavy down from my roof. By the way, Santa uses this knot because it was declared safe by the U.S. Elf and Safety Commission. You don't have to tie it around an object. You can utilize the loop in a bolin to hang something from a limb of a tree. Imagine how handy that will be when you're camping. You can hang a backpack, wet clothing, a hammock, or to even hang a bag of trash up to where the animals can't get into it. Also when you're camping, use a pre-tied bowline loop to go around a tent stake. I had to remove a big limb that was split because of a snowstorm. I cut the branches off in small pieces and had an assistant yank them to the side. I didn't want to get knocked off the ladder and I didn't want to damage a good limb below. Here I'm using the loop from a bowline and a monkey's fist to make a connection or latch. The bowline is a good way to connect two different ropes together. Or you can even use the bowl and knot to cinch down things you want to bundle. You're going to learn the bowl and knot by taking your rope around an object first, just because it's easier to learn. Once you learn the bowl and knot, you can tie the knot without going around an object and leave that loop out there which you saw earlier demonstrated, is very helpful in some circumstances. Well, many of us, including myself, have learned how to tie the bowl and knot by remembering a story about a rabbit. The rabbit comes out of his rabbit hole, goes around the tree, and goes back down into his rabbit hole. I find this story very helpful when I haven't tied the bowl and knot for a while. I think you will too. Why don't you pause this video Go grab yourself a piece of rope and we'll tie the knot together several times. To start it off, I'd like to show you parts of the rope that I'll be referring to by name. This section right here coming back toward me is the tree. This little fluffy thing is the rabbit or the end of the rope. Uh, this is going to be referred to as a loop 
this was the rabbit hole that's collapsed when, when we tighten the knot. Also, I want to point out this little part of the rope that goes around the tree. If I hold it this way, I call this the life preserver. And it circles the, the, the tree itself. And I like you to know where that is because this is what you use to undo the knot, no matter how tight it is. You just pull on that life preserver. So we've got our rope. In this case, I have a piece of furniture that I'm going to use as the object that I wrap the rope around. I've made my rabbit hole, and I want you to note that the tree is on the lower portion of the rabbit hole coming back toward me. The rabbit is going to come out of this hole, circle this tree, and go back down into the hole itself. We're going to loosen it by pulling on the life preserver and I'll show you that again. I've made the rabbit hole with the tree on the on the bottom side coming back toward me. I'm circling an object. The rabbit comes out of the hole, goes around the tree, and back down into the hole. To tighten it I just pull the rabbit and pull the tree. Now, what I want to show you is just a small element. Um, there are two ways you can circle the tree with the rabbit. Either way is perfectly acceptable and fine. But the way I circle it, the rabbit ends up being outside the loop. Let me pull that rabbit back a little here. And go around the tree the opposite direction. Go back down into the hole you will find here that it's still a good bowling. Nothing wrong with this at all. But the rabbit ends up being inside the loop. And it's just preferred if you, if you end up with a rabbit outside of the loop itself. Doing it one more time. I've made a, a rabbit hole with the uh, tree coming back toward me. I've allowed the rabbit to circle an object. The rabbit comes out of the hole, around the tree, back down to the hole where I'm pulling on the rabbit and the tree to tighten it. I want to also tell you that once you get this down and you've practiced it, it's just an easy knot to forget. So what I would suggest you do is tie it around something that you see occasionally. And when you see it, just walk over to it, untie it, tie it again, and walk away with a smile on your face. It's the sort of skill that you'll want to hold on to for your life. If you're doing, if you want to do the bowling and just leave a loop out there, well, then you have an option of either just doing it in the air like this or rest it on something, and especially if the rope is, is not as stiff as this one come up through the hole, go around the tree, go back down into the hole, and you've got it. Thanks for learning to tie the bowl and knot today. Please like, subscribe, and buy my book, That's Cool, where I teach you 49 awesome tricks and skills to raise your cool factor. Also, please check out my other videos down in the description area below.